Hey guys, a slight update in this video. We're going to be trying to do some improvements on the chatter marks that we found on this part at the end of last video. If you want to learn more, keep watching. <laughs> Welcome back to this video update. This is more of a episode 2.5. Uh, we didn't really want to get stuck into making more of these parts until we're dulled in some of the surface finishes. So as you may recall in the previous video that the little part had two types of chatter patterns that we were not too happy with. We had the large wavier pattern and we also had the smaller tall striation marks from direct chatter. Now, our hypothesis here is that we've got mistuned servos and the bed is vibrating on the machine because it's not rigid enough. The base of the machine, I kind of took a little bit of a shortcut to get a table going first, but I didn't put any internal stabilization of the fixture plate. Now, you can see here we've we've removed the machine off the top of the bench and you can see it's absolutely hollow. So with that mixed with the um, the, the, the Modvice uh, fixture grid that we've put in, we've actually removed quite a bit of integrity from the middle. So uh, we just went through and I braced it up with some vertical bits of plywood and such like a building putting in a top plate. Uh, and then that meant that we could put the machine back on, lock down that fixture plate and really dial in some of the rigidity and vibration issues of this table. So what have we done? We have gone ahead and replaced the servos with the proper stepper motors that we spec'd for the machine. They've finally turned up, so that is a win. Now, with this, our software is actually tuned for steppers. So, we have a linear resolution of 1.25 microns in our software. Can't really hunt that with a servo with tuning. Like We, we can really get this dialed in quite nicely with steppers being an absolute positioning system. Now, we made the part, we've now gone and made an acrylic one. This one gave us a little bit more transparency on the issue, shall we say. So we're going to get stuck into that, but before we do that, we made a 3-op jig. So this means that we can cut the raw material, we can then put it as OP1, we can put OP2 onto this side, drill the uh, the, the pivot arm for the, the valve itself sitting in, the, in the, 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 the rocker arm for the valve, then we can flip it upside down and put it on the OP3 and cut the remaining part of the, of the rocker pot. What this also means is once it's set up and we've gone through this process, every time we start and we move a part through the process, every time we hit the button, a finished part comes off the end of this. So we'll know every time we hit go, the finished part comes off. And that's about optimization. So let's jump across onto the machine. Let's make a mess. 